Good morning. It's uh, still partly cloudy out there. If you're stepping out and your children are stepping out as well, make sure you get some protective clothing for them. And also make sure that your, uh, your doors and everything else is locked. So just in case the rain comes up heavily, it doesn't affect you adversely. Well, the Daily Graphic this morning says, Boss records profit two years running. Managing Director Edwin Provesal there. Also, Education Minister inaugurates TVET workshop for KSTU. Accra needs structural plan, spatial planner, enforcing city bylaws. 3,500 response team starts work. On the back page, Animal Research Institute cries over land encroachment. The BNFT says Hotels Association backs introduction of e-levy and activities on domestic debt market at all-time high due to favorable interest rates. Z-Mobile, Ghana app, new experience, new look. The Daily Statement, CCTV exposes sales girl over 25,181 Ghana cities theft. Agenda 111 hospital projects uh, kick off at Yagaba. And Ghana Water Company Limited, not profit making. MD reacts to reported losses. And upon Kruma cautions TV3 against reputational risk. The Daily Guide this morning says Professor Duncan announces $2 million for world peace. Also, Nana pledges more support for education. Rebecca calls for action against um, uh, agent action against non-communicable diseases. And masked men attack KNU as a student. Government awards scholarship to 47,160 uh, students. The Ghanaian Times. Carnage on roads. MTTD gets tough on highways. Mr. Hassan uh, Tampuli is Deputy Minister for Transport is addressing commercial transport operators in Accra as the National Road Safety Authority launches Easter Stay Alive campaign. President receives first Ghana Social Value Report and President launches Commission for Technical Vocational Education Training in Kumasi. Driver mate arrested for allegedly stabbing city guard to death. On the back page, hat stripped, uh, tipped to ride over Sky FC tomorrow. Jana face out others in action today at the MTNFA Cup. The Finder newspaper. Kumasi Shoe Factory opens first showroom in Accra. Uh, Demoto hit Gimpa over 1,000 annual, uh, 1,000 Ghana cities annual uh, car parking fee imposed on students. Government pays 100 uh, Ghana, 100 million Ghana cities are years old NHIS service providers. Also, TV325, guard against reputational risk. Kapon Kruma says so. Uh, 1,299 drivers without license arrested in 2021, an increase of 111% over 2020 figures. The Custodian newspaper, never drop guard on reputation. Upon Kruma to TV3, uh, Baumia launches a viewed volunteerism initiative. Dufour gives hope to NDC full soldiers. So 2-4 approves $850 million Newmont a half a project. Ghana's water supply coverage hits 96.4%. Cecilia Dapa is the minister responsible. Republic Press, three remanded for allegedly defiling 10-year-old girl. Fire destroys 13 residential apartments, several properties in Kumasi. Rescue yourself from privileges committee. Here is minority to first deputy speaker and Kandapa under fire for bizarre admonishment to judges. Government will account for E-Levy, Akufuado, and going to jail was good for Baka Vomao. Uh, he brags. The independent new paper, that's the new one. Uh, be sincere and tell Ghanaians if Dumso is back. Energy analyst to Great Co. High Court throws out Huapo. Mafias again as injunction over disputed land stands. A pandemic treaty cannot leave solidarity to chance. Also, will account for e levy Kufado tells Ghanaians. Uh, Koa boss launches two million Ghana cities uh, dollars project, peace project, as he calls on Russia Ukraine to stop the senseless war. The Ghanaian observer. We are creating opportunities for youth, Vice President Baumia, <coughs> sorry, as he launched the National Youth Volunteers Program. Guard against reputational risk upon Chroma 2 TV3. And Akufuado launches commission for TVET as government seeks to boost technical vocational institution. Uh, government to 24, okay, $850 million, new month a half of projects. Finally, the daily analyst, without fear or favor, $13 trillion. Uh, war cash can end poverty in Africa. Koa FS boss assets. Professor Samuel Duncan then. Also, hearing cases of senior lawyers first. Inus Afusini defense chief justice says Eni Yaba was only reminding judges of existing protocol. Alleged uniforms for teachers. GS box fires back. Says uh, it's uh, just uh, a pilot by some people, not the uh, institution itself. Alleged police brutality is a catchy call for independent probe. And Baumia launches the National Youth Volunteers Program. Those are 
what you have on the front pages of the dailies this morning. Many thanks indeed to Grandpa Clothing uh, Dan Suman for my outfit this morning. Also, a happy birthday to Mr. Abdallah, a.k.a. O2 at the Ghana uh, GIPC. Long life and prosperity. This from Amin. Uh, also, uh, to Gideon Chum, Berima Asari of Springgate International School, uh, Kaswa, Ghana flag. Your 10 years today. This from your entire family. Also, to Mr. Stephen Nakote of Performance and Special Audit Department. God bless you. This from Mrs. Gloria Nakote and the children. They wish you all the best. Dennis Abwaja is here. He advises um, the local government ministry. He's here uh, on the ticket of the MPP. We do not have a rep of the NDC here. So when we do, I will afford them a chair and allow the NDC to also ventilate their side of the issues. Dennis, welcome. Good morning. How are you doing? Ah, good morning, Jody. Um, I've been well. Yourself? Yeah, I'm fine. After you. Fine weather. After, yeah, it's, it's cool. Very, very It started very raining fine yesterday. Yes, and, yes, yes, uh, yes, yes, we, we're enjoying it. It was a heavy windstorm on the mountains last mm. night. Oh, there was? Yes, 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 yes. Wow. Very heavy one, mm. you know. But the weather is fine this morning. It is. TV3 is 25. What are your thoughts? Yesterday, I saw the very beautiful, mm. you know, um, ceremony. Mm -hmm. And I, I think it's, it's, it's quite refreshing. Mm. I remember <laughs> TV3 early days when mm -hmm. the soup, was it the soup opera? Yeah, is that how they call it? The yeah, the yeah. Telenovela soup opera. Oh, there was one, was it Sunset? Sunset Beach. Sunset Beach. Yeah. We're very, very, I was very, very little. I don't know about you, but I was very, <coughs> very, very, very Sunset little. Sunset Beach. You know, and that was when, you know, those, those I think that was when Telenovela was mm -hmm. actually. It was now coming. You know, it was, it was, it was coming. TV3 Pound, yeah. 25 years is a very, very long way, long way coming. And TV3, obviously, as, as one of the very widely watched, mm. you know, TV channels in the country. Mm. I mean, you go all the way to the Upper East and Upper West, and you have people, right. you know, telling you about, about, about TV3. So mm. congratulations to TV3, congratulations to the board, management, and the entire, you know, um, staff, all of you, for how far we've, we've come. Mm. I, I think that it's, it's very refreshing mm -hmm. to know that we have a country where um, a media house is able to thrive <coughs> for over, Sorry. over 25 <coughs> years. Over 25 years, mm. that's, quite, that's quite refreshing. Not every country is Would blessed that, with, yeah. this, with this kind of you know, success when it comes to the media mm. space. Mm. Albeit challenges here and there, you know, but we wish you more and more and more years ahead. Mm. Hopefully the next 50 years we should, we should be seeing TV3 bigger and larger. Than, than we have now. Yeah. I hear you. Dr. Clementa Park is joining us here. He's also uh, a member of parliament for the uh, Bosa South constituency and he's here on the ticket of the NDC. Solu? Solu, Nana. Kubasa? Kubasa. Mm. New York, sir. Jem, Jem, Jem. Nana, Nana. Jem, Jem, Jem. Nana. Great. Good to have you, Doc. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to be here. TV3 is 25. Yes. I know in your constituency they call you well, MP TV3. MP TV3 so <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm oh, really? That's what oh, they yeah. call him. MP TV3. That means it's crystal clear. Yeah. That is, <laughs> well, that is one way yes, of interpreting yes, 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 yes. it. The other interpretation is because of my long <laughs> affiliation oh, okay, okay, with the TV okay, station. TV station. Uh, but I think that uh, we must commend TV3 mm -hmm. on this uh, unique anniversary. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have seen media houses rise and fall. Uh, many never saw <laughs> the light of day. And uh, it has not been easy, obviously. I mean, uh, we know that to run an organization, I would actually say an empire, mm. uh, of the size of Media General, <coughs> uh, it takes a lot of work uh, from <coughs> management, from uh, staff, from cameramen, from newscasters, mm -hmm. and all those who have a responsibility uh, to help keep it going. And so on your 25th anniversary, uh, we must congratulate you and urge you on uh, not to relent uh, in giving the best. Uh, there is a reason why your slogan is the way it is. Right. And I think that it is here to be contested. Mm. Uh, that is a good testament. Uh, don't change your ways. Augment them. And continue to improve on what you have. Mm. Uh, TV3 definitely is a powerhouse. Change uh, some. 
we have all <laughs> been <laughs> we have all we have all been beneficiaries. I mean, I mean, my own political career has been enhanced very largely, <coughs> sometimes even personally, <coughs> by my affiliation uh, to TV3. It's one of the stations that is most watched in my constituency, mm. which is why we speak bully right. and we greet the people of Bulsa mm. South. So we commend you and we expect you to rise even faster and further mm. uh, in the next few years uh, ahead. So okay. once more, uh, congratulations to the Media General Fraternity mm. on my own behalf and on behalf of the NDC. Thank okay. you very you much. <clears throat> I like all change that. Change is do. the only constant thing that needs you. But change that, that can be positive or negative. Move. That's what I'm saying. So they I'm talking about positive, positive. change. Mm. I don't know. I'm talking about positive Very change. Well. What do you Very want well. them to change? Positive what do you want, change. What do you want to be three to change? No, I've, I've, I haven't done any. I haven't done any analysis, analysis of it yet. <laughs> but I only disagree with <laughs> Doc saying that. He likes change. everything. Uh huh. That's, ah, okay. That that would be very strange. Okay. You need to <laughs> change to improve. Perhaps I should have said change. Positive. Add more positive change. Exactly. Very well. Exactly. Considered. We hear you. And Thank I'm sure you very much. Agrees. Thank you very much for your congratulations. I'm not part of the <laughs> panelists. <laughs> yeah, moderator. Yes. Let's go to the colleges of education. Uh, quite worrying trend that the earlier in the year, CITAG had to embark on a strike uh, along with UTAG and Tewu and uh, the anesthetists and about six of them. Now, most of them are back in the classrooms, if not, not all of them are back in the classroom with, under some arrangement. However, the non-teaching staff are on strike. Today is day three of their strike. Uh, Christopher Mwaku has been um, monitoring what's been happening there and shares this with us. Then he tossed this in and, and then let's come back so the panelists could have a fair idea of what it is. I understand that there's um, a National Labor Commission meeting with them um, today to get a fair idea of what their demands are and also to um, press, press them down. So let's, let's see Christopher's report. Uh, the non-teaching staffs are on strike. For that reason, the library is also closed and the few blocks that are left are also locked because the laborers are supposed to work inside it and they have locked it and take the keys away because they said their allowance are not being paid. And for that reason, they are on strike for that. True, because since in the morning we have not gone to class, we those around ask me, we are just in the kitchen helping them to prepare breakfast. It's not easy because at this time we are supposed to take breakfast as at now we are still sending the porridge inside for them to take breakfast which will affect our next lectures it comprises a lot of sectors in the curricula which include the financial department the library and other uh, uh, offices so as of now the library is closed the financial sector students are trying to have access to run other activities they cannot do it and all other sectors so it is not only the dining hall that we are facing chilling with all the other sectors. For the Dean of Students of the school, the strike will have an impact on academic performance. It's really a concern and a big challenge. Uh, as you know, colleges of education have been riding double track for now. And they were here six weeks and went home. They just came last week. And they are supposed to be in class to be really uh, receive their lectures to prepare themselves for their examination. But here is the case, they are always here. And they are here as level 300s because the level 100s are writing their end of semester. If they are not here to prepare the food, that means that people will go to the exam center. Well, so those are the concerns that they have there. And you know, the conversations have started already. Doc, you are uh, a deputy ranking member on the Education Committee in Parliament. Has this come before you, this um, situation, um, non-payment of allowances and, and all the matters in between? Well, Johnny, first of all, let me say good morning to you and uh, good morning to Miracles. Mm. And to say good morning to viewers, particularly my constituents of Bulsa South. Mm. Since we are going to talk about education, uh, let me first state a devastating situation that has hit my constituency, affecting four schools. Mm. You know, we are in April. Mm. And of course, <clears throat> the rains are beginning to show up. Unfortunately for us, in the last week, we've had two rainstorms. 
only yesterday was the last one, and we anticipate there will be more coming. Uh, Fumisi was hit very hard. Uh, a number of private buildings were destroyed. Power pools and cables destroyed. Mm. <clears throat> but what actually wrenches my heart is the fact that three schools in Fumisi had their roofs damaged. Uh, a fourth school in Chansa also had its roof damaged. And we have not even entered the real rainy season yet. So that gives me a lot of worry. Uh, I have not slept soundly because teaching and learning is important and must go on. Mm -hmm. uh, given the current economic conditions in which we find ourselves as a nation, given that I'm a member of parliament who is here to receive a tranche of my common fund for the last four quarters, it is going to be very challenging. So we ought to look at other avenues to assist so that before schools reopen, the damaged school buildings will be repaired so that <coughs> teaching and learning can go on. Mm. I could go on and add other matters well, affecting I'm, I'm physical education. I'm hopeful that it, it will be done. Well, I'll I'm do hopeful. my best. But the state has the principal responsibility. Mm. Uh, the assembly, he is a, a former uh, MC. Uh, clearly, the assembly also has a role to play. Yeah. But I also have a role to play. Right. Uh, but I obviously have to make this known. Mm. But how are you going to play it if you do not have your... Uh, what do you call it? Your common fund available to you? Well, this is where you have to be creative in terms of uh, reverting to your contacts and networks mm -hmm. to see if you can mobilize private resources. Mm -hmm. And I also appeal to benefactors who sometimes out of sympathy mm -hmm. and uh, knowing the importance of teaching and learning mm -hmm. and how space is important to enhance that sometimes will come to your help. Mm. And let me take this opportunity to thank a benefactor who supported me with 18,000 Ghana cities to procure 100 pieces of dual deck furniture mm. for uh, URC Primary School. Uh, I don't know him. He says he doesn't want to know me. It's mm. not necessary. Mm. But I must appreciate him. You know, videos were going viral about whole classes of people sitting on the floor. And uh, he, he, he saw them on his own mm. and gave the help. Okay. So there are people who are right. willing to, to help mm -hmm. if they know uh, the issues. Now, coming to the issue to do with the strike. Right. Non-teaching staff. Embarked upon the, the, the non-teaching staff of the Colleges of Education. Of the bat, it is unfortunate. Because any time there is industrial action in any sector, Mm -hmm. and particularly so in the educational sector, it affects teaching and learning. That's right. I mean, we've heard your report, we've heard the principal, we've heard the students as to how this strike is already impacting negatively on effective... In fact, teaching and learning has come to a standstill, so mm -hmm. to speak. But the issue is, why have they gone on strike. The allowances have not been paid. Who is responsible for ensuring that they get the allowances paid? If those responsible for meeting those demands, mm -hmm. and I believe as prescribed mm -hmm. by the collective agreement, because labor unions don't just wake up and go on strike. There are usually processes that would unfold it is only when they get to a state where they feel that they are not getting the needed attention, the powers that be are not making an effort to meet their obligations as prescribed mm. in the collective agreement, or they have a sense that the powers that be clearly are not interested in their welfare, and they see no other legitimate, no other legitimate avenue to seek recourse, then they go on strike. Strike actions, and I've worked for a labor organization before when I was in, in Canada. Mm. I was the coordinator, uh, coordinator for the teaching support staff union.
So I've sat in meetings and I know about labor and the triggers. Right. Before a labor union decides to declare a strike, mm -hmm. then the union, its leadership and members have come to the conclusion that that is the only last resort. Because ideally, uh, no one would want to punish people who rely on you for a service. And given that I come from the educational sector and I have that background, mm. no <clears throat> one in that sector would deliberately, willingly want to do something that would impact negatively on teaching and learning. Because if the schools don't exist, if the students do not attend the schools, mm. you have no job. So why would we turn around to punish them for no reason? So I think that the state actors, in particular government, mm. uh, through the uh, National Labor Commission, and so far I've not had issues about I, fair I, wages. I hear they said, no, not fair wages. I've not uh, had fair wages. Labor Commission is said to meet them today. Very well. So I, I would urge that uh, the meeting should be given the entire seriousness that it deserves. Mm. And the, the state actors, particularly government, always has a role to play, mm. either directly or indirectly. Because at the end of the day, the buck stops with the holders of the public purse. Most of these issues have to do with, as you said, allowances. Allowances translate to what? Money. Money. And so let the government also do its part mm. so that this matter will be resolved as soon as possible so that teaching and learning can go on. Mm. There are many other challenges that mm. the colleges of education we'll, we'll come face. To that. I want Dennis which, to have a, which, bite, a bite. You know, when we get a chance, I can enumerate them. Yes. So, Dennis, um, this is the situation that the students are cooking their own food. They are running double track, for example. But more importantly, the non teaching staff say, We have not been paid, so we cannot come and work. That means that the lavatories, the washrooms, the library, everywhere else, you know, that they have to attend to will be shut down. It is just a innovation of the students to take their destinies into their hands, start saving them and keeping them in school. If not, they would have been asked to go home. Um, Johnny, um, thank you. And um, mm. a warm good morning to my senior um, doc. Mm. And um, unfortunate mm. incidents in, in, this, in this constituency. I think the, the district assembly should try and step mm. in mm. and provide some very, very quick relief. Mm. Mm. For, for, for these for these children. Johnny, I, I I think it's very unfortunate that we allow some of these issues to fester on to the point of strikes mm -hmm. and then these students would suffer. <clears throat> Usually it becomes very difficult for you to recover the lost time mm -hmm. even if you mm -hmm. get them to go back. Mm -hmm. The painful thing in all of this is that eventually when the strikes happen, mm -hmm. after two or three days, um, there will be some discussions, some agreements, and then they will go back to, mm -hmm. to post. The question is, why were these discussions not held and these understandings, you know, uh, reached mm -hmm. so that we don't even get to the point where we put some of these beneficiaries, mm -hmm. as I call students and nurses, whoever it may be, right. through, through distress. I, I was trying to gather the reasons why they are on strike. Mm -hmm. And I realized that some of them even hover around administrative yeah. challenges. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if you look at what the association is saying, the first thing they raised was that some of their members have been placed wrongly. Mm -hmm. So they have first degrees and mm -hmm. they are probably mm -hmm. on a rank that's lower than a first degree. That's right. Pure administrative. So why should it could have been dealt with exactly you know, locally. why should we even allow it to to fester on mm -hmm. to this point? Mm -hmm. So if we have an institution that says that if you're a degree holder, mm -hmm. then you are category A. So Dennis is a degree holder. Mm -hmm. I am on category A. Mm -hmm. Then Dr. Clement Park is a degree holder, mm -hmm. but is on category B. Mm -hmm. Obviously he would not be, be happy. And they, they served one notice before See, they and they, and when he raises these concerns. Mm -hmm. How difficult. Maybe some, one of these days we should invite these technical people who do these things mm -hmm. to come and explain. Why you know, they do those things. Wh how, why, why is it so difficult mm -hmm. that I, I am a degree holder in an institution, mm -hmm. I'm on a wrong 
category mm. and I need mm. to be moved to the desk category and it has to take me months and years. You know, it's quite, it's quite strange, some of these things. Maybe when they explain to us, we'll be able to understand. So that if it's the fault of the political class, mm -hmm. as to why these paperwork take so long. They will also have our own discussions and resolve. I look at another challenge, non-payment of migration areas, mm. you know. And Johnny, you'll be surprised that you go into it and you'd realize that somebody is supposed to probably do collation, do compilation, do aggregation of these things and it sits on the table. I'm just speculating. But these are some of the realities mm -hmm. that sometimes when you go behind the scenes, behind some of these strikes, <coughs> you, would, you would notice. The other one is exclusion of payment of generic allowances. So it means that once I see exclusion, mm -hmm. it means that some people were included mm -hmm. and some have been excluded. Mm -hmm another administrative challenge there mm. and then the other one is partial payment of office holding allowances it means then that there's been some part payment mm. and then there's been some parts you know outstanding but if they don't then, have the money um how do they pay no that's what i'm saying that that's what i'm saying that these things shouldn't fester mm. i am just looking at the issues you know as they have put out okay you know so that we real, so that we ask ourselves if all these things are really uh, money issues. And, and Johnny, for those of us who have had the cost to sit around the table on some of these issues, mm -hmm. sometimes you go to realize they are not even money issues. Mm -hmm. It happens across several other sectors. You can go, for example, the local government sector. You can have some staff coming together and complaining. They haven't been paid for months, mm -hmm. two months, three months, mm -hmm. and then they are complaining. They are writing letters here and there. Then you call them and you sometimes realize that, you know, every month they do what they call validation. That's right. And you realize that in particular assemblies, those who are responsible for validation have personal problems with some of these people. And they have some 10, 15 people that for three, four months they haven't validated. And then when they go to them to go and complain, you know, the first call is for you to go to your HR mm. or something. To go. They tell the you, oh, yes, they tell you, oh, we did it too. <laughs> we did it. We have to check from controller. We did it. We have to. And when you aggregate these numbers, there are 261 yeah. districts. When you aggregate even five mm. per district with such a scenario, it becomes thousands of people. Then it becomes an aggravated issue. In a similar vein, the, it may be money, money issues mm. as well. But I always prefer that these things are money issues than administrative. When it's a money issue, you know that the money is not there. That is why you've not been paid. Mm. Okay. Then we can hold those who are responsible for money. To, to release those monies. Mm. But it becomes very painful that my uncle, my father, my mother, my niece, nephew has not been paid simply because his or her document is sitting on somebody's desk. And the person has either <laughs> refused or delayed in processing those documents. That's the point I want to make this morning. I mean, it's okay if I know that it is money mm -hmm. that is not there and hasn't been paid. Then we can hold the necks of those people right. who are responsible. But if you look at the reasons they have given, mm -hmm. I, I can place money in the context of about 20%. Mm. Because all the issues here are purely administrative. And, and the question is, why should we get here? Right. Okay. Let's, let's, let's begin to, all of us, mm -hmm. begin to sometimes probe some of these things. And I would want the National Labor Commission to also begin to speak more to the media on some of these issues. Mm -hmm. When they have the meetings with this labor union, sometimes... What, are, what, are, what issues come up? Yes, mm -hmm. let us know. Mm -hmm. Bring up some of the issues so that everybody will have an understanding. And then we can begin to blame the political class when they are supposed to be blamed. Mm -hmm. Blame the technical people when they are supposed to be blamed. Even sometimes, some of these things, sometimes when you go into it, you realize that it's a sitting on the desk of sometimes they even the labor union themselves. At times, mm. at times they will agitate, agitate, agitate the issues because, oh, but we told you guys to go and do A, B, C, D and bring it. We have been waiting and it hasn't come. I think it's unfair to these uh, uh, non teaching mm. staff mm. and the situation mm. that they are in. And I'm hoping hey. that by close of day today, would have the, it. the National Labor Commission would have made some headway. We'll, we'll come back oh. after the break to, oh, okay. to get into mm. the, the other issues that they spoke about. Um, see you after the break. Welcome back and a happy birthday to Dan Ni Toto, uh, CEO of Tortrex. This is your birthday today. Happy birthday to you. Before the break, we were discussing the non-teaching staff uh, strike uh, day three today of, at the Colleges of Education. But here are some students uh, who were also raising some concerns about their uh, allowances that are in arrears. Some eight months, some six months, some four months. 
and they will explain their own issues um, in a bit. Um, but, but while we get that video ready, Doc, the, the question of allowances, do we go forward with it? Do we abandon it? Or do we review? What do we do? Well, Johnny, you know we had a position on allowances. Mm -hmm. In fact, many political observers seem to have factored that in mm -hmm. as one of the reasons why our electoral fortunes mm -hmm. uh, dwindled right. in the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you remember vividly <clears throat> that it was a very topical <clears throat> issue when our candidate at the time and our party as part of our manifesto, we had indicated that we were going to replace the teacher training, nursing training allowances uh, by taking them away and making provision mm. for them to have access to student loans mm. because uh, they are tertiary institutions. Uh, that didn't sit well. Mm. And uh, our political opponents you know, took advantage mm -hmm. of that proposal. But the reason why we had sought to do that was not only because of the fact that the teacher trainee and nursing trainee institutions had become tertiary. Uh, obviously, we now know that teacher trainee colleges of education are now degree awarding. They are now doing four years instead of mm. three. Right. But it was also because there was every indication mm -hmm. that the allowance regime had reduced the number of spaces mm. that would be available for young men and women who would want to take mm. teaching as a profession. Mm -hmm. And that was a consequence of the fact that there was a constraint mm -hmm. with regards to the monies and the quantums of monies that the state can disperse as allowances to students. Mm -hmm. So there were very good and legitimate reasons why we made that proposal. And I dare say that those reasons still make sense even today, mm -hmm. especially given what we are seeing. Our opponents said that they would reinstate mm -hmm. those allowances. They have done that. Mm -hmm. But you can see that they are having a challenge meeting their obligation mm -hmm. in terms of remitting the allowances regularly. Right. Now, remember that it is out of these allowances that the fees that the students should pay is deducted from and other Compliance, charges. Right. Then the balance is then given to the students as their stipend. So... When the allowances are in arrears, the implications <clears throat> are not only to the students, but even to the institutions and their functionality. And that is why the arrears, as we are talking about, mm. is a problem. Colleges of education have reopened, but I know that a lot of the colleges a number of students are yet to report because of this issue. Really? Yes. Oh, really? Because of this issue. Because your fees have not been paid. It is from your allowance that your fee is detected. It's the allowance that is supposed to also keep you going. You have not received it for six months, eight months. You are not a worker. How are you supposed to function? So there is a problem. We can really look at it, but our position then... Today, as we speak, given the current circumstances, so makes sense. Now, you heard about a double track. Mm -hmm. There are even some colleges of education which have been alleged to be running a triple track. Africa Education Watch issued a statement, I think, about a month mm -hmm. or so ago on the challenges facing the colleges of education. And they made the case that it's not just double track, but some are practicing quite double track. We have elevated them to a degree, to degree award institutions, well and good. That has also allowed more students to stay in the system compared right. to when it was three. Right. But at the same time, we have not expanded infrastructure. 
So the same situation that we faced with regards to the inadequate infrastructure, that is even still bedeviling the smooth implementation of the Free High School policy, has also now moved somewhat to the Colleges of Education. And we are even seeing it at some of the universities. If you go to uh, Legon City Campus, uh, they also run a double track. So the, the challenges of the Colleges of Education mm. uh, ought to be addressed. Uh, but just before he comes Quick, in... Quickly, so that... It, mm. You know that the reinstatement of the allowance came with certain conditions or certain appendages. That was the introduction of the Lancetia exam. That's right. And, and then the deal of the national service. Right. To which we, we oppose. Why, why, why are you because opposed to, to some, Because if it's a profession, they must sit for licensure. Well, like architecture, we like, have, law, we like have said that like medicine. You can find a way of doing this mm. in house while they are still in school. It can be made a subject on its own. Okay. Inculcated into the. Yes. The, so that the when they are in the final year, they would prepare mm. and write the licensure exam as part of their final exams. Okay, so you are not against the licensure exam. You are, we, you are, are against the mode, the mode of administration. And the way it has been done. In okay. fact, we, this, this was our proposal. And they did it the way they have chosen to do it. Because when that happens, it saves them the time and the resources. And we would have eliminated the national service. We were not doing it in the first place. Mm. So that as soon as they finish, mm -hmm. they are posted. As we speak, there are so many schools that do not have teachers. <laughs> Yet we have them completed that national service. And because they are not able to pass that test, mm. they are sitting at home when we are employing people teachers who have not been properly trained, so to speak, to teach. To us, it is not the best way mm, I hear you. to use our <laughs> resources. So there are policy issues that we, we, we still believe this government mm. It's not getting it right. I hear you. Dennis, uh, before we go to Abwaji, let's uh, play the, the video of the, the student uh, narrating their issues by themselves. Just one minute or so. Please toss it in, Michael. The government owning us is, is in levels. Um, just that for my level, I'm in level 300. Government is owing us for six months. Six months allowance. And our seniors level 400 is owing them for about eight months. Then for the level 200, it's also owing them for six months. And the level 100 is four months. Yes. Most of us depend on this allowance to pay our school fees. We depend on it to buy our handouts. Some of us applied for training colleges, even though we have the passion for teaching. But we also knew that when we come, we have something as allowance that will help us in our stay in school. But now, as we have come here, things have changed. We have been struggling. Some of us, when we vacate, we have to go somewhere and force and try to see how we can get something to come and pay our school fees. But if this allowance was to be come by now, we we'll have we'll always use that one to settle our, our, our school fees. Okay, so that's a student there, recorded by uh, Christopher Mwakwa, Savala Regional Correspondent. Dennis. Tony, the gentleman who just spoke has just summarized the position of the government mm -hmm. when it comes to the payment of teacher training allowance and nursing training allowance. Mm -hmm. You heard him. He said, some of us, when we applied for teacher training, mm -hmm. We knew that we would receive allowances. Right. And that's why we came. Mm. For some of us, we have to struggle to be able to buy handouts. Okay. Some of us, we have <clears> to <throat> go and do other things and struggle to make money before we come here. That's right. We rely, as he said, we depend on the teacher trainee allowance to pay our fees, buy our handouts, mm. and other things. That is the reason why I want to reiterate on your set today that the Nana Dodanko Ekufuado and the MPP government, Dr. Baumia, Nana Dodanko Ekufuado and this MPP government, considering the issues that this gentleman has raised, mm -hmm. having it at the back of our minds prior to 2016 elections, mm -hmm. we're very convinced and clear that paying teacher trainee allowances is the way to go to ensure that the gentleman who spoke now doesn't remain at home. 
but gets an opportunity to come. But, to but how does he satisfy again, the prerequisites that again, you mentioned? Again, he does. If, he explained if, it Yeah, he did. But how again, does he satisfy the prerequisites again, if the allowances are in arrears? Again, again, he has basically clarified and confirmed the position that this government has. Mm. That it is only the allowance that will ensure that the poor man's child or the poor woman's child mm. also gets an opportunity to enter the teacher training. How do they this do that the if, this if, is they, the if, if the allowance is in the arrears? That's, this, that's what this I'm is asking the, you. This is the student's own words. Mm. If you listen to him, he said that he's in level 300. What it means is that he's on three years of college. Mm. Doc, right? right. That's, three right. Years. that's right. What it means is that as of now, he's supposed to have been paid 36 months mm -hmm. of teacher training allowance. Mm. He says he's in arrears for six months. Right. It means that government has fulfilled 30 months out of 36 months. Okay. That notwithstanding, he is still not saying that government should scrap teacher allowance. Mm. He clearly, from what he said, realizes that irrespective of the delay mm. of the six months out of the 36 mm. months of his allowance, mm. he still needs it to be able to continue and, and his I've, teacher and I've, training. I've asked you a very, I've training, asked you a very simple question college, that you are avoiding. I'm saying that... No, I'm not. I'm just... I'm, I'm saying that... To you. How does he satisfy these prerequisites that you mentioned, which you want to attribute to the government and extol them? Yeah. How does he satisfy those prerequisites? Buying hand, handouts, feeding, all the things that pay in his fees, if they are in arrears. And Doc just mentioned, for example, that some people still have not reported to school because... Perhaps they can't find avenues to borrow from or people to support them while they wait for the allowances to drop. Doc's position cannot be verified. Well, I'm just I saying... I have no reason to doubt I'm, him. I'm just saying... I'm just saying I that, have no reason to doubt him, okay. but I can't be verified. I'm only... I don't want to speculate. I only want to use but, your own but clip. But do you, do you know how they survive me, in the me, absence of the respond. allowances? Let me respond. So I want to use your own clip mm. so that there's no room for speculation. No, no, no. There's, I'm not speculating. Now, no, so I'll use a gentleman. That's right. So this gentleman is in level 300. Mm. What it means is that... But for another Don Kweku for this teacher trainee mm. allowance that was given to him, he will not be in level 300. He'll be home. From you, his own have, you have made that point already. So, and so, even spoken so about 30 explains, months. So that but explains, I'm saying that, so that but, but I'm saying that for the six months he's in school now, the allowances have not come. But he's not home. That's what I'm well, trying to but say. He's, That's the answer but, but, see, but he's not home, mm. but perhaps he's borrowing, which is the case. And, 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 and I'm saying Perfect. that. But he's so, borrowing so, against so, an expectation. So those who do not have avenues to borrow, okay. how do they survive? So let me answer you. Okay, right. so give me room. Right. So I'm telling you that this gentleman is in level 300. He's expecting to receive 36 months of allowance to be able to be in teacher training. That's college. right. Now, he's been paid 30 months. That's right. For which reason he's been able to move up to the third year. Mm. It's left for six months. Granted, it's not the best. It's wrong. It's putting them under stress, under duress. And we are calling on all the authorities responsible to fulfill that obligation mm. so the gentleman doesn't go through that stress. But what the gentleman just told you, basically negates the position that Dr. Clementa Park mm. and the NDC have, mm. that the teacher training allowance should be scrapped mm. and that it is anti-progress. I am saying, and that's the explanation. Well, we didn't say it was No, that's what progress. you mean. That's what you mean, basically. <laughs> that's my interpretation. That's not very well. Yes, so that's says interpretation. I am saying that. But for the teacher trainee allowance, mm. the gentleman who is owed six months mm. will be scraping around to look for 36 months of money that he doesn't have. Again, you made a very important point. He's owed six months after 36. So he's enjoyed some 30 months. Mm. He's borrowing. Let's assume that he's right, borrowing right. against it. But the gentleman is borrowing against an expectation. Mm. An expectation which is going to be fulfilled, mm. albeit it's delayed. That, for me, I think is a way better mode of running the system for the poor to benefit mm. than to say that because we are going to be in areas for six months, because we are going to be in arrears for three months, mm. let's scrap it. You, you that know, is, that you, you know, that no, no, hold on. I'll, are you coming? Position. Dennis, you know that, for example, ahead of the 2020 no, but you elections. Your point. Well, you are making your point. Okay. The viewers will be. Okay. But do but you know that ahead of the 2020 elections, mm. for example, the uh, issue of the allowances and the delays of same came, mm. came up. Mm. Now, question on my mind is, do we have dedicated sources of fund for it? If we do, why the delay? Government is responsible for making so many payments as captured in the budget every year. Mm. I am not with the Ministry of Finance. Right. I am not with the controller. Mm. So I will not be able to explain why there's a delay. So that question, I, I, I'm not really pleased to answer it. Okay. Okay. But I think, and I am with a view, strong view, I agree with the government mm -hmm. that, listen, you were supposed to pay 36 months for this young man. You've been able to pay 30 months. It's not the best. You owe him six months. Mm. But this gentleman is hopeful. 
okay, has been granted a small window mm. of an opportunity to pursue tertiary education, mm. but for your teacher training allowance. He is complaining that he is in distress. He never said he doesn't want the allowance. Mm. He never said it should be scrapped. <laughs> he never said the allowance is not good. Mm. He never said the allowance was not cancelled. Mm. It is this gentleman that we are looking at. So what do you so what, what we have as doc, a doc, I'll bring, I'll bring you in, What we have as allow a Dennis to, to what we have yeah. as a responsibility mm. as a government to do is to ensure that we we meet this gentleman at the point where mm. he needs this assessment mm. to be able to complete his education. Okay. That for me is the fundamental. So, that for me is so where I want us to Christopher is say, to, suggesting somebody is suggesting that when the students are on vacation, they are not paid allowance. Yes. So that you cannot aggregate 12 months, 12 months, 12 months, and, and say 36 months, because they are not in school for all 36 months of the year. No, when uh, I say 36 months, I basically mean within, this, he's done three years. Yes, but, three years. But, but then he doesn't get 36 months. Well, so take allowance. out whichever month is not paid, right. but it's still right. on so year I, on year. I, I just needed to Yeah, but it's still on year on year <clears throat> aggregation. Mm. It's still on year on year aggregation. Right. So let's say they do three months, six months mm. in school. Yeah. Then they are paid six months six in the first months, year, six, six months, months six six year. Months. So that'll be 18 months. Right. So this gentleman right now speaking, for me, I just wanted to hear him say, we don't want the allowance. Cancel it, we can pay. Okay. But I mean, who will say so, 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 we can so, afford? So, so, so that you heard him say that mm. he struggles. Mm. You heard him say that he struggles and that he even applied Everybody to teacher does. training college just because he was expecting okay. to get allowance. Th then it's, what, 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 what about the, what about the school of thought that suggests that, look, the allowance is um, operating a certain quota system mm. that doesn't allow for the numbers that are willing to get in to be able to be enrolled. However, it puts a certain cap on it because of what government can afford. And that let's apply student loan, let everybody come in, let people get student loans, especially now that the government says, we are not looking for guarantors, we're just using your Ghana card to be able to assess the loan. Is it in time that you allow for more numbers to come in, you have need for teachers so that they are trained, they get to teach and serve their nation, they pay back their loans using their Ghana cards. They don't put pressure on guarantees. Is it not you know, time? I heard, I heard Doc, I haven't confirmed, but I heard Doc say that the, some of the colleges are running double track. Mm. And we know the principle of double track. It's not new in mm. tertiary institutions. Mm -hmm. If you're the university, they've been running it for years. Some of them are running triple. The, the principle for double track is that you have so much numbers than the infrastructure that you have, for which reason you split the students. Mm. So I think that we need to do some analysis mm. of the system as it is now to be able to confirm that mm. indeed it is the allowances that is being paid to students mm. that is reducing the intake into the schools or it is the infrastructure that the schools have mm -hmm. that is reducing the intake of the students. Because really, if we are running a double track, then you can't put it on the allowance. Mm. It means that already the infrastructure in the schools are, are limited. Mm. For which reason, even with the allowance, they are running a double track. Because for me, I don't think double track is a bad thing. Mm. I think double track is a very positive thing. It's a good thing. Okay. It helps in ensuring that uh, every citizen or a lot more citizens have access to mm. the services that the <clears> state <throat> has to provide. So... Mm. I, I would even go a step further to say that, listen, for me, I don't subscribe to anything that has to do with cancel of allowances. Let's keep the allowances and probably introduce fee paying. Mm. Okay? So that if, because the allowances is why, too why, why not? Why not let them, because the government says so, going forward, I won't have to get Dr. Apak or Dennis Abwaji to guarantee for me to get a loan, student loan. I just need to bring my Ghana card and apply for student loan. And I can get We it. have the view that when it comes to teacher training colleges, mm. that's a view of and the nursing government. training college. And nursing training college. We should provide it as a social safety net for the citizens of the country. Okay. That is our view. But then, but then the your, allo but the allo your allowance is putting a cap on how many people no, can the get No, the allowance is no. You haven't verified that. Nobody has verified that the allowance is not Is that not it? No. I haven't. That's what I'm saying. I haven't verified. You haven't verified. I don't know. They are running a double track, according right. to Dr. Right. No, according to the principal. I mean, that is, that okay, is so, the reality. So if they are running a double track, then the allowances could have ignored a double track and do no, a single but, 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 but it's because of the infrastructural, yes. infrastructural challenge. Yes, yes that's what I'm saying. So, mm. so if there's an infrastructure mm. challenge, mm. Is then you are also talking about cap. Mm. And blaming it on the allowances. Is to to no, no, I'm not blaming, oh, I'm not blaming it on the allowance. Oh, doc, I don't want to do no, that to you. But, but you see, the principle of the allowance mm. puts a certain cap. It puts a quota system. There's a quota system attached to the allowance. Even with that, the schools are filled. That's the point I'm making. I'm saying that even if, even with the the cap mm. the infrastructure is already being split into two okay so so i just want us to understand so i'm saying that if the schools can take a thousand and because of the allowance they are now asked to take say 300 350. that's not what is happening no. mm. right now what is happening pay what's the ranking member of the committee no, is telling what me? the principal okay said. what the principal is saying right. is that the school can take a thousand but the allowance has given them two thousand okay 
That's what basically say because they, because of that you have to split them. Yeah, they have to split it's it. Not oh, but that, that, that's that's simple. That's simple why would you say, of no, no, but otherwise why you are you see, running over the, the, the point I made. Am I? Am I? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, okay, make wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> no, so the only reason why you are running a double track mm. is because the infrastructure to hold the students okay is not enough, and mm. so you split them into two. Mm. Okay, so the analogy that you give, which I agree to, the college can take a thousand. At the moment, they are running a double track simply because they have 2,000. Okay. So it means that the allowance hasn't really placed a cap pair. You, you are not factoring capacity. in the fact that there's wear and tear, so some of the... I have factored all. So you, I you, did, you, did, all. you did that you still got double. Agree, you I did that you still you. got double. Yes, I agree with you on all of that. Your math is I interesting. Want, Your math is interesting. I only want to make the point that... Mm. If there is a there is a cap, mm. then it cannot entirely be blamed but, but, um, on the allowance. But, but, you see, but then just then for me to conclude. But, but then if you see, if you have space for 1,000 mm. and you've used it over time mm. and there's wear and tear, mm. so the numbers, some numbers will reduce. Yes, you, still but infrastructure you, is... But you, are, but you are picking it as 1,000 no, no, and because still, they are running a double track, there will be 2,000 no, no, automatically. If there is a wear and tear, mm. you are only going to deal with infrastructure available. Okay. So the ones that are worn and torn mm. are not counted as part of your infrastructure. But, but you are not so saying this based have, on scientific No, no, you and, I, you and I, we are not no, saying no, 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 I'm not, I'm but not, just for I'm me to, wrap, you just for me to yeah. wrap up my point, mm. I think that I want to reiterate and re-emphasize the fact that it is for people like the gentleman who spoke mm. and the points that he made, for which reason this government mm. has no reason and has no contemplation of scrapping teacher allowance. I hear you. Well, I think you that see, it meets the poor. I hear you. will continue to give it I hear to you. The poor. You see, Johnny, you raise a number of critical points. Mm. What is the point of the allowance if it is not being remitted? And that is very important. But you see, when we made our proposal, it's not as though we didn't proffer an alternative. So we are not to let the students be on their mm. own without any support to pay their fees. Uh -huh. So when Dennis tries to <clears throat> present the issue that we propose as though we have not provided an alternative, mm. he's not being fair. Okay. But you see, we know mm. that the proposal that we made, which we had started implementing, mm -hmm. was positive in terms of increasing the numbers. Because mm -hmm. within that period, we saw that the enrollment mm -hmm. had increased, even without the allowance, so to speak. Right. So it cannot be the case mm -hmm. that the allowance is the determinant mm -hmm. of whether or not people decide to enroll, to train, to become teachers or not. Mm. That cannot be established. The gentleman said it too. But it, that, is him. I mean, yes. that is him. Yeah, yeah, yes. That's empirical. Yes, yes, okay. yes. That is him. That's I'm empirical. not taking his opinion mm. away yeah. from him. That's empirical. Doc, but it is also entirely Doc, possible. Doc, you sit on the Committee of Education in Parliament. So under, under your watch, your government's watch, when the allowance was pulled back or scrapped, did it by any stretch increase enrollment? Yes, it did. By what percentage? I wasn't on the committee at the time. Okay. Remember, I was in the big house. Mm. But from what I know, it increased. I think somewhere 10% and above. Okay. The student enrollment increased. Johnny, you but know why see, it will increase? Mm. No, a quick one. But you see... You know why? <laughs> when it increased, do you know what is happening? As for increase, it will always increase. Even the investors, even, uh, I don't want to mention, but the investors who are charging dollars in mm. this country, they are full. You know why? Because it will make room for only the rich people to go to school. Mm. The Very poor man will see, home. see, that is my so point. Is so, so you see, mm. as well, I am glad, always I'm glad he has increased that. Mm. I am glad okay. he has raised this point. No, I just wanted to. I am glad because be this we'll have to go. Mm. that is saying this is now proposing to win off public tertiary institutions mm. from the public payroll. Training colleges, colleges of education are part. Of, are part. Yeah. So when that students. happens, we are talking about the students. When that happens, on the students. these tertiary institutions yeah. would have to charge realistic we'll prices okay. that, yes. so that they can model the resources. So, okay. so, okay. sorry. So, sorry. so, so we hear that for the same principle, mm. Mm. for the same principle, they are, the teachers say they are not paid. Well, Danny, Oliver, Michael, give me a minute. Let me get some information from Doc. Doc, you know the UMAC situation, GIJ, GIL, and then NAFTI. They were put together as one. Mm -hmm. The act was passed in 2020. Up until now, they don't have a council. 
Uh, I don't know if that has come to well, attention. Well, it, it hasn't, but I'll raise it. They, they, they don't have a council. Uh, I'll raise so, it. So, literally, the schools are running without a head. Well, that's, that's very and, unfortunate. And GTEC is and, now stepping and in to go and do illegal. graduation. It can create a lot of problems. You remember the situation with the University of Winneba? Mm. It had to do what matters to do with the council. So I would want to urge the minister, because mm. this is entirely within the domain right. of the minister, working with uh, Professor Salifu, right. who is in charge of uh, GTEC. Right. But you see, before we leave, just one he, he has point. to. So the minister has to submit the names to the presidency. Yes. Because the president's job is to uh, put the council. Yes, we know. He's the president is the one to, but the work, by and large, is that by the minister. But, Johnny, let me use this opportunity to make an appeal to the IGP. Mm to institute an investigation into, into the abuse of that young man who is disabled mm. in the central region. His only crime mm. was to provide the police with information about illegal narcotic trade. Mm. And the police well, officers turn around to brutalize him mm. and to arrest him. I hear you. That is not well, well, well let, me, let me say happy birthday quickly <laughs> to <laughs> Mr. Stephen <laughs> Nakuti of Performance <laughs> and Special <laughs> Audit <laughs> Department. Uh, God bless you. Happy <laughs> birthday <laughs> from <laughs> Mrs. Gloria <laughs> Nakuti. Also, <laughs> uh, happy, happy birthday to Mr. <laughs> Abdallah, <laughs> a.k.a. O2 <laughs> at GIPC. <laughs> this is from Idi Amin. Happy birthday to Godwin Chum, Barry Masari of Spring Gate International School, Kaswa Ghana Flag. Your 10 years today. Happy birthdays from your entire family to Mr. Stephen Nakuti. Uh, one more time. Amos Lawson. Um, this is from your friend Alvinoy and to Dan Ni uh, Soja Toto, CEO of Totrex. It's your birthday today, Anyami. Happy birthday to you. And also, uh, another birthday message. Well, it's two messages quickly. It says, um, good morning, Mr. Hughes. Being in level 300 doesn't mean they have done 36 months. Uh, that is, uh, the first semester is level, uh, in level 100. So they couldn't have done 36 months, uh, Dodoy. Good morning. Hope you are well. Kindly, uh, okay, this is a happy birthday to Prince Kwating, um, teaches at Alabasta International School. That said, principals of colleges of education made a submission to President Kufour to remove the allowances and allow them to enroll more trainees in 2008 and put the trainees on student loan trust. And um, principals of colleges, they made their submission in 2000, you see. Well, Fadama uh, Fuseni says, Johnny, can you tell Dennis that it is not true that but for teacher training allowances the gentleman wouldn't have been at, oh, in school to, uh, the teacher training allowance was that. to be replaced he with student it, loans and not subscribed when the allowances was and written enrollment increased by more than 60 percent so the reintroduction rather uh, reduced access to the quota system thanks to christopher Mwako, yes 50 percent increase 50 percent increase yes 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 so this appeal goes to all the people of ghana okay that we should do everything in our power in our strength with all our might to resist the NDC from coming back to cancel the teacher training allowance. I see. Oh, <laughs> okay. oh that's your appeal. Uh, but the yes. elections are not here. You are campaigning no, no, already. No, no, no. Uh, okay. Okay. Thanks to Grandpa you closing in that someone from my office. 020 985 Dr. Clement Park is the member of parliament for the Bolsa South constituency. Thank you very much, Doc, for your time. And also Dennis Miracle Sabwaji, former MC for Equipim South, and is also uh, an advisor at the Ministry of uh, Local Government. Or is it at the presidency? Your post. Look at the local government. Okay. We'll see you after the break.